What's up guys? So I'm super excited about teaching you guys this build. As usual, I will be putting the cut list in the description of this video, or if you would like to actually have the plans in your hand, head over to my Etsy shop. That will be linked in the video description. So we're going to start out just by making the cuts for the board itself. And this is just a standard cornhole board. Yes, my build may be a little bit different than most, but ultimately it's just a cornhole board. One of the things that I like to do different is that anytime that I'm using two by four material, you know, just regular construction grade two by fours, I like to square them up. I like to cut at least a quarter of an inch off of each side. That way we get rid of those rounded edges and we have a nice square work piece. So once we have all of our material cut down to size, it's time to start assembling. I'm going to start just by laying out the frame just to make sure that everything fits perfectly. And then we can head over to the 720 to start putting in some pocket holes. So we're going to start by putting pocket holes into the ends of the part labeled in rail B. And this is with your standard one and a half inch setting on your drill bit. And then we will be putting pocket holes into the sides of all of the frame parts all of the parts labeled A and B. In order for this to work with your typical one and a quarter inch screws, you will need to put a piece of three quarter inch plywood or scrap wood under the material. This will allow us to attach the top, a three quarter inch plywood top, from the bottom, hiding all of our screws. So once we have all of our pocket holes drilled, we can head over to a flat surface to start assembly. For the outer frame of this bill, we'll be using a two and a half inch pocket hole screw. And so here's a little tip for the crooked lumber that we get today. I put the bottom screw in a square and I'm actually using a clamp to pull the top part in two square. And to attach the three quarter inch top, we'll be using a one and one quarter inch pocket hole screw. And now we need to make our legs. We need to mark hole placement at one and a half inch in and one and a half inch down. And the ends need to be rounded at least a half of an inch in. So I'm just using a tape roll for this. This will allow the legs to move without touching the bottom or hitting the back of the board. And we can just cut this out with a jigsaw. For anyone that is wondering, this is part labeled D in the list. And for our bolt hole, we'll be using a 3 8 inch bit. And with Craig's drill guide, this makes for a perfectly straight hole. Now let's head over to the miter saw and put our angle onto the end of this board. This will make sure that our cornhole board actually sits perfectly level. This cut is made at 28.5 degrees off center. Now let's cut our bolt holes on our boards. So our bolt hole on the board needs to be three and a half inch in and one and a quarter inch down. It is very important that these holes are drilled straight or your cornhole board will not sit level. Now we will attach the legs using a 3 8 inch lag boat that is 4 inches long, a washer, and a wing nut. If everything has been cut correctly to this point, you will have exactly 12 inches from the tip of your leg to the base. And this is where we're at for right now. And if you want to make two, which of course you would, go ahead and make your second one. It looks like a normal cornhole board for now. The rotating circle will be 20 inches, so that's what I'm doing now. I'm measuring out 12 inches in from the sides and 15 inches down from the top. This will allow plenty of room to add my hole and plenty of room for the circle to move. And I actually want to see where everything will fall, so I want to see this 20 inch circle on my board. For this, you can use a ruler, a piece of string, a tape measure. There's several different tricks on making circles. Now I'm just marking center point for my hole. That will be 9 inches from the top and 12 inches from the side. This will put your 6 inch hole at regulation height. And for the 6 inch hole, I'm going to be using a 6 inch hole cutter. Now this does not have to be done with a hole cutter and they are expensive. I mean, I think this one was like 40 bucks. You can also use a router for this or if you have really steady hands, you can try out the jigsaw. Just a little clean up and now it's time to cut the 20 inch circle. And you know how I like jigs. So I'm going to teach you how to make this. This is a very simple jigsaw jig for cutting perfect circles. I'm starting out with a board that is about 18 inches long and 4 inches wide. And I'm attaching to the outer edge a 2 inch by 4 inch board. I'm going to remove the blade from my jigsaw, put it onto my jig, lined up with the board that is already attached, and place a second board so that the jigsaw is snug. 
And then I will attach that second two inch by four inch board. And now we need a backstop. So depending on the model of jigsaw that you have, this may vary, but this is really, you know, just to keep the jigsaw from going through the other side. Now we want to put our jigsaw blade back in and actually make a cut up until the backstop. So now with our jig made, we can go ahead and cut out our circle. Since we are looking for a 20 inch circle, we are actually going to be placing a screw into the jig 10 inches away from the blade. And keep this jig when you're done because you can use it to cut any size of circle. I like to get the screw started that way I can actually see it and then line it up with the mark that we made earlier. Now we need to start a starter slit for our jigsaw blade. You know, typically we would cut a hole, something like that, to start a jigsaw blade, but we can't do it for this. So I'm using an oscillating tool with a fine tip on it. You could also use a Dremel tool or even a drill bit with several holes. But once you actually have the slit and your blade can fit through, you're ready to go. The jig will keep it perfectly straight. Just make sure to keep all of your pressure down and forward. The screw in the center will actually keep the circle from falling once it is cut. We'll do some light sanding on the circle that we just cut and then move our cornhole board to a flat surface. With it on the flat surface, we'll go ahead and put our center cut back in. And now we need to space this back out to equal. I found that just some brad nails do a perfect job of this. And now we'll go ahead and cut our motor support, part labeled G and we'll put pocket holes on both sides of this. We're not gonna use it just yet, but we'll have it for when we're ready. And now we will install our center block F. This is just a four by four piece of wood. I actually cut this from the leftover parts from the hole that we cut out. So I wanna find the center point to this four by four, so I'm just drawing lines from corner to corner. And then I will drill that exact center point out and then place a screw. Again, I like to see the screw protruding from the back. That way I know that I'm lining this up perfectly. And I'm gonna insert this screw into the exact same hole that we used earlier for our jig when cutting out the 20 inch circle. That should be exactly center. Now I'll be needing that center point again. So I'm going to pre-drill, glue this down and place two more screws. So just a random thought, how did we come up with the name cornhole? I've had a lot of people refer to it as bing bag toss, which would make more sense but cornhole let me know if you have any ideas all right who's hungry actually we're going to be using this rotisserie kit i will put a link in the description for this very one really any of them should work but you may have to change the mounting so let's see what's inside of the box so we have our instructions and obviously we're not going to be you know rotisserizing chickens so yep still got it Okay, so you're going to need two motors because you're building two boards, but there's enough extra parts in one kit to build both boards. So you can actually get away with just buying a kit and an extra motor. So I want to utilize as much of this kit as possible, and it's actually nice stainless. So we will be using the forks, and we'll also be using the quarter inch square stock. Since the forks already have an adjustable collar built into them, they're perfect for this project and for making fine tuned adjustments on height you'll see here in a moment. But as you can see, the prongs are way too long. So we're gonna cut those down to three quarters of an inch in height. Now how you cut those is up to you. You can use bolt cutters, angle grinder if you're comfortable with it. There's several different ways, but this is what you end up with. Look like little spiders. So I learned this little trick on the second board. The problem is, is once you put your rod in, whenever you screw in your set screw, it shifts the rod out of center. So one of the rods that come with this kit actually has a point. So take that point and place it to where the center screw was. And then tighten up the set screw. This will make the forks centered to the rod. Once your fork is in place, just give each prong a little tap with a hammer. This will mark your board with round circles of where the prongs were, and we would just pre-drill those out with a bit that is just a tiny bit smaller than the prongs. And I'm going to show you what not to do. Do not use a hatchet to, uh, you know, tap into place. I have four kids, tons of hammers, and I could not find a hammer to save my life. But that's what it looks like. So 
now just to make sure, I mean, this is in there really tight, but just to make sure that it stays in place, you can use some CA glue or some epoxy, really just any type of adhesive that bonds the metal and wood. Now, if you notice, there is already a piece of square stock in this that is three and three quarters of an inch long. So you would just need to take a piece of square stock that comes with this kit and it comes with a lot and cut it down to that size. Insert into the collar and push down until it is flush with the wood. If you've taken the circle out, go ahead and replace that and recenter at this point because next we're going to be installing the motor mount. And I was able to find a like 18th century peg hammer, but um, anyway, you want to get it flush with your square stock and then mark both sides. This will be our center point of our board. We're going to measure an inch and a half in and we're going to drill a 7 16th hole. Since I did not have a 7 16th opening for this and I need this to be perfectly straight, I started with 3 8 and then changed bits to 7 16th. And now our motor bracket is ready to be installed. We're going to install this with pocket hose facing up and we're going to slide it right over the shaft. The edges of the mount board should be perfectly even with the edges of the boards on the side rails. Now we're just going to install with pocket hole screws. Now the only changes that we have to make to the motor itself is just the mounting plate. And we're going to be replacing it with one inch corner brackets and a four inch flat bracket. Now we're going to remove the mounting plate. Make sure that this thing is unplugged. We're not getting into anything electrical here, but still, make sure it's unplugged. So remove the screws. Notice the spacers. Keep up with those. We're going to need those. We're going to put the 90 degree underneath of a spacer, tighten it down. And then on the flat bracket, we're going to put the spacer on the underneath. So now your setup should look just like this. Two 90s, one flat bracket. And now we'll just line up the opening in the motor to the square stock. Slide it right over. Once in place, we'll go ahead and lock this motor down with a couple of screws in the side and a couple in the back. And now we'll install our circle support H. So this is just going to be for this circle to actually rotate on. So this will support it from the underneath. So if a bag hits the very edge, the motor will not take the brunt of that weight. It will come down onto this support. And all four supports should be installed with one half of an inch overhang onto the circle. This gives you plenty of support and not too much friction for this motor. The original motor was much smaller and could not handle the friction, so I came up with this idea. This was an adjustable ball bearing support bracket. Yeah, I'm glad that we upped the motor and we no longer need this for this build. Well, it looks like everything's in place. We just need to flip our board over and see how she works. Now keep in mind that the center will always be removable, so if you're packing it around, make sure it doesn't fall out. So with it flipped over, just turn it on and see what happens. For some reason, if you start to get a little drag, you see how it's doing there? That's an easy fix. That means that the shaft has been tightened down too short. Remember, we put it all the way up against the wood. Sometimes that will be perfect, but in this case, we need to raise it up just a bit. And by doing that, it's actually going to raise the circle up and decrease the pressure that it's putting on our guides. It's as simple as loosening this collar and raising this shaft. If you raise it much, I would put something underneath of it just to shim it up. The repetitive bags hitting this may knock it back down. And there you have it. It's as easy as that. And now, you just have to decorate it up. But first, let's put some weight on this because I have a lot of people that are skeptics with the weight. So I'm adding every tool that I have laying around here. And with everything adjusted correctly, it works perfect. It is kind of cool to see, you know, some harebrained idea come to life. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you can take that and run with it. I mean, run fast with it because first to the market are going to be the ones who make the most money with this. If you like ideas like this, make sure to smash that subscribe button. I have a ton of other super cool ideas that we will be diving into. So I told you at the very beginning that if you hung around to the end, I was going to show you my next prototype for one of these boards. Still working out some kinks, but let's check it out. Okay, so obviously by now you know that 
I'm crazy. Whatever comes into my mind as a possibility of even being done, I'm going to try it. So this is a prototype that I made just using common stuff that I found in my shop. I mean, I'm using junction boxes and old pieces of conduit and everything else, but it'll give you a basic idea of how things work. So this is the Extreme Cornhole 2.0, I guess you could say. Now this is an interesting concept. It is actually ran not only by the motor we discussed in the video, but by a rotating linear actuator And again, this is just stuff I had laying around the shop. You can see where I made uh, my pivot points, you know, just with these wiring junction boxes and old pieces of pipe. But it's a prototype. Will I ever actually build it? Probably not, but it's fun to play with. So till next time, guys, go out there, get creative, blow people's minds with what you can come up with and make some money. Tell ya. You're about to witness the first game of Cornholio ever played. And this is what it looks like when you are totally waxed at a game that you invented. <laughs> this will not be in the video. <laughs>